This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they are providing to the entire upper echelon community. How do I even begin here? To be honest, there are a lot of different angles and separate ways to cover the story. I could, for example, go down the road of technical analysis, the economics of downfall, where was the money, why it all happened, etc. And that would probably be the most logical approach given the circumstances. Alternatively, I could go down the road of emotional appeal, inflammatory rhetoric, sensational language, and try tapping into a sense of betrayal in the crypto industry for maximum viewership. Even more abstract, I could approach the topic as a futurist. Where does it go next? Contagion, fallout, etc. Or lastly, I could tackle the subject as a pseudo-intellectual thought leader. This is how it is, this is what you should think about it, and here is why those conclusions are obviously correct. All of these supremely different angles are possible, and all of these different angles are currently happening. Technical analysis is everywhere as the dust settles on what FTX did and how it affected the market. Emotional outbursts are almost even more common, as millions of people are swept up in the flow of unmitigated financial fear. Predictions? That might be the most prevalent factor of all, as theories race to every corner of the internet and pseudo-intellectual thought leaders hosting Twitter spaces for tens of thousands of gullible listeners are ranting and raving about insider access and exclusive information with absolutely nothing to back it all up. All of these angles have been covered, are being covered actively, and will be covered again ten times over, but one tactic I have not seen as much of is pure, maximized information with an entertainment twist. Maybe I'm not the right person for the job, all of you can be the judge of that today, but I'd like to go down this road and cover a story that seems to be one of the greatest financial rabbit holes of our time. Before going further, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive and growing online learning community that is built by and for all of its users. One of the immediate best things that I always mention, there are no ads in any of the classes. Ads, of course, pay my bills on here on YouTube, but with Skillshare, you aren't going to be served any advertisements. You can just go at your own pace without interruption. Most recently, though I do consider myself to be rather adept at graphic design, I've been exploring a class by McKay Saturday called Logotype Design Create Brands with Typography. As I push towards a more comprehensive merchandise selection, typography and logotype design seem like an excellent skill to improve, and Skillshare has a multitude of classes to help me do that. Skillshare as a platform is created for all brackets of skill. You can be a hobbyist, amateur, or even full-on professional who finds value in it because it allows people with real experience to communicate that lifetime experience in a helpful way. When you join, you can even try out a Skillshare Live class, which adds a whole new dynamic layer to the online learning experience. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below in the description will get a one-month completely free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring right now today. Again, the link down below will give the first 1,000 users a one-month free trial, so they can explore the site right now. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring the channel. Let's begin by going back in time. Sam Bankman Freed, initials SBF, was born in 1992 on the Stanford College campus. Child of Barbara Freed and Joseph Bankman, Sam was connected to the world of political and academic elites at a very young age. Sam's mother, Barbara, was a notable Stanford professor and also a co-founder of political fundraising and strategy organization Mind the Gap. Sam's father, Joseph Bankman, was a prestigious lawyer and also an avid tax law reformist. During his very first foray into political influence peddling, Joseph Bankman hired his own personal lobbyist for $30,000 in order to sway the California state legislature into accepting a tax law policy augmentation known as Ready Return. When discussing that choice, Joseph Bankman said the following, quote, I don't want to say this wrong, but you want to be taken seriously and a lobbying firm gives you legitimacy. It shows you're a real entity. They're great guys. I kind of had the wrong idea about lobbyists. It's a complicated profession, end quote. Ultimately, Joseph Bankman was unsuccessful in this particular endeavor, but the lessons he learned and the affinity he discovered for buying political influence would no doubt be passed down from father to son. So far, that's Sam Bankman Freed, today's main character, his mother, Barbara Freed, and his father, Joseph Bankman, but there's a couple more family members worthy of mention here. Next is his aunt, Linda Freed, who is a World Economic Forum member and certified epidemiologist. Linda Freed has a significant number of professional titles and achievements on full display here, but the most important factor to remember is her background in epidemiology. Last up is Sam's brother, Gabriel Bankman Freed. Gabriel is, as per his LinkedIn page and a now deleted about section of their official website, deleting things from the internet is a common thread we'll see throughout this video. He is the founder and director of an organization called Guarding Against Pandemics, which is a group of scientific and political experts formed during COVID-19. 
Notably, in March of 2021, the Biden administration was seeking to invest $30 billion into pandemic safeguards, while guarding against pandemics, led by Gabriel Bankman Freed, was specifically lobbying Congress for $30 billion at the same exact time. What's more, guarding against pandemics is a PAC, also known as a Political Action Committee, which received over $12 million from a company called Alameda Research in the fourth quarter of 2021 and the first quarter of 2022. Let's recap. Sam Bankman Freed, our main character. Mother, Barbara Freed, founder of a political fundraising and strategy organization called Mind the Gap. Father, Joseph Bankman, tax law specialist with an affinity for buying political influence. Aunt, Linda Freed, World Economic Forum member, as well as a notable epidemiologist. And lastly, brother, Gabriel Bankman Freed, founder of Guarding Against Pandemics, which was, according to their own website, lobbying for $30 billion from the Biden administration at the same time that the administration was attempting to allocate $30 billion to pandemic safeguards, while their political action arm is funded by a company called Alameda Research. Quite the family we have here. Still, this is just the beginning. May 8th, 2019. This is a day that would change the lives of millions of people. They just didn't know it yet. May 8th, 2019 is the day that Sam Bankman Freed founded a company known as FTX. Headquartered in the Bahamas, also incorporated in Antigua and Barbuda, FTX was a crypto exchange that exploded in less than one year to over a million users. Rapidly accelerating to a valuation in the tens of billions, FTX, owned and operated by SBF, was just one company inside an enormous spiderweb of investments. Critical to understand here is that SBF had not just created one company, he had created two, and then used those two companies to buy, invest, or control further crypto ventures, dozens of them, from 2019 through 2022. The second company that we need to keep an eye on was called Alameda Research the same company that donated over $12 million to the Political Action Committee guarding against pandemics, as it sought to secure $30 billion from what seemed to be a very, very willing Biden administration. These two companies, on what seemed to be an unstoppable parabolic rise, would become dominant players in crypto, traditional markets, and American politics. All three of them. Backstopping an industry that seemed to be in freefall, Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX as a whole were often referred to as the adults in the room. Business moguls like Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank referred to FTX as the one place he would not get in trouble. In, in, in managing the decisions on which projects to, to invest in, because I'm very fortunate, my deal flow's insane, I see everything. Mm -hmm. And I have to disclose, I'm a paid spokesperson to, uh, to FTX and a shareholder there too, because we mentioned them, and big advocate for Sam because he has two parents that are compliance lawyers. If there's ever a place I could be that I'm not going to get in trouble, it's going to be at FTX. Sam was called the JP Morgan of this generation by figures like Jim Cramer. Cramer himself being an absolute joke, but still commanding a sizable platform in established finance. JP Morgan of this generation, Sam Bankman Fried's FTX, yes. is, is slashing everybody's margin. And uh, average fees per transaction across the industry had to climb by 50%. A lot of that is, is the man, Sam Bankman Freed. Hell, Tom Brady was even on board to the tune of over $600 million. And FTX was now the official namesake of the Miami sports arena. Billions of dollars in advertising, massive partnerships, huge bailouts for competing companies laid bare by falling prices, and all of it building an image that FTX was the safest place to be the most trustworthy and lucrative name in crypto, and the one company that was doing it right against all odds with nothing but upside in their future. You were called the JP Morgan yep. of crypto. Yep. Does that bother you? or did They call him the JP Morgan of crypto, right? We had a couple billion going into, the, into this. And joining me now is Sam Bankman-Fried. He's the CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. You may have seen their TV ads occasionally and one of America's youngest billionaires. Forget the banks, the crypto world is now gonna get a bailout and it's coming from one of their own. Kate Rooney joins us now with how Sam Bankman Freed, CEO of crypto exchange FTX is keeping the industry as prices take a hit. He's keeping them stable. How, Kate? Yeah, that's right. Sam Bankman Freed is really becoming the industry's lifeline during a crisis lately. First it was to BlockFi through FTX, then half a billion dollars roughly through his quant trading firm to Voyager. 
FTX, led by Sam Bankman-Fried, was the crypto industry darling child. But remember, his parents were extremely well-versed in political activism, fundraising, influence peddling, and tax law. So where would it go from here? Answer, regulation. Already securing a place as the second largest crypto exchange in the entire world, FTX wasn't done, not by a long shot. Sam took it upon himself to be the driving force behind governmental regulation of crypto. After all, he had the platform, the influence, and the money, so why not? Proposing regulation framework to the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trade Commission, SBF was in the room during policy discussions. On top of this, he was recorded in frequent meetings with top-level figures at the SEC, which deals with the regulation of securities. Meanwhile, the SEC had active lawsuits against projects like XRP, Ripple, and Library, LBC, claiming that they fit the definition of a security, and thus they need to be regulated. But no action was being taken against, or investigations being opened, into FTX. The company seemed unstoppable. Closed-door meetings with regulation bodies, Sam Bankman-Fried even testifying before Congress, while his two parallel companies grew ever larger, acquiring more and more partners, or subsidiaries, day after day. Just one problem. A small problem, but a problem that would bring the company to its knees like the Greek hero Achilles. Alameda Research was initially thought to be a separate entity from FTX. One was simply an exchange, the other a hedge fund and acquisition firm. But in late 2022, that illusion began to dissipate. Exposed by Coindesk journalist Ian Allison, Alameda Research turned out to be far more connected than not. The FTX native token, FTT, composed a massive chunk of Alameda's balance sheet, meaning that these two companies, in simple terms, weren't just affiliated by the founder, they were deeply connected through financing and assets. That by itself might have been fine, but there was more. Alameda Research, after a series of faulty investments in high-loss trades, had found itself in a massive hole. Attempting to dig out of this hole, funds were allegedly siphoned away from FTX, $10 billion or thereabouts, through a backdoor code loophole specifically designed to circumvent compliance systems that Sam had crafted himself. These funds were used to prop up Alameda Research at the cost of liquidity for FTX, and when exposed to significant pressure from a rival exchange called Binance, the entire scheme imploded. This is where I will summarize a bit since there will undoubtedly be thousands of videos on the topic that precisely deal with this financial implosion, but the gist of it is this. Alameda Research was a faulty, ill-constructed money pit that absorbed so many losses in such a short period of time during the crypto bear market, meaning a sustained downtrend in the wider space, that it required billions in order to stabilize. When fear began to build in the broader community spurred by a massive hinted sale from Binance, people attempted to withdraw their capital, as they rightly should, and that outflow of liquidity after FTX had secretly siphoned away most of its assets into Alameda Research exposed that the two companies were in fact bankrupt. Long story short, the scheme went down in flames, because neither company could fulfill its financial obligations, too much capital had already disappeared from their balance sheet, and the world's second largest crypto exchange did not have the money it needed to pay out customers. That right there is the basic rise and fall of FTX, but as the ashes rain down on the wider crypto industry, even still, theories and speculation abound. First came the outrage. What was happening? How could this be true and why didn't anyone stop him? But then, alongside an absolute tornado of falsified claims and wild accusations, came legitimate information. It turned out that the signs had always been there. CEO and founder of FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, openly tweeting, stimulants when you wake up, sleeping pills if you need them when you sleep. And far from an isolated incident, the CEO of Alameda Research, a former girlfriend of Sam Bankman-Fried, Caroline Ellison, who we will certainly be discussing in just a moment here, was seen tweeting things such as, nothing like regular amphetamine use to make you appreciate how dumb a lot of normal, non-medicated human experience is, end quote. Suffice it to say, a picture began to form, reinforced by alleged insiders at FTX, where the management structure of this massive multi-billion dollar crypto empire was a bunch of romantically involved mid-twenties drug users partying in the Bahamas and stealing from customers. That's a pretty dramatic shift here, from gold standard of crypto to drug-fueled delinquency, but it's far from over. Directly after FTX and Alameda Research declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy, now officially filed in the United States, there was panic. Not because investors had likely been wiped out, but because an unknown hacker, allegedly, was looting FTX wallets and stealing hundreds of millions of dollars right from under people. 
News exploded across social media. The FTX application was allegedly malware, as supposedly confirmed by a developer. Don't visit the website, it might download a Trojan. People were panicking, really they were. Users were showing a zero balance in their FTX wallets, and over $600 million, by some claims, was flowing out of exchange wallets and into the pockets of unknown third parties. Was it the bankruptcy court? Was it a disgruntled insider? Was it an altruistic white hat simply trying to help everyone? No one knew, but everyone was speculating. This is where we start to find slightly more credible bits of information. As the panic was churning, chief security officer of competing crypto exchange Kraken, a platform where it seemed a large portion of the allegedly stolen money had been funneled through, tweeted out, we know the identity of the user, seemingly confirming that this was an insider at Alameda Research or FTX who had decided to take everything as the company burned. Who that insider could be, I have no idea. That's a topic for law enforcement. But what we can analyze is the structure and connections of FTX, as well as Alameda Research, that have come to light as the internet turns on them. Caroline Ellison. I said we would come back to her, so here we go. Caroline Ellison was the CEO of Alameda Research, a company that donated $12 million to the political action committee run by SBF's brother, Gabriel, as it was poised to receive $30 billion from the Biden administration. Caroline Ellison's father is the department head of economics at MIT, and Gary Gensler, chairman of the SEC, an agency with whom Sam Bankman-Fried had regular closed-door meetings, is a former professor in that very same department. Digging even further, we can see that SBF himself donated tens of millions of dollars purely and exclusively to Democratic candidates and organizations for the U.S. 2022 midterms, earning him a place as one of the largest Democratic donors in the world, second only to George Soros. In addition, during frequent press interviews and public statements, SBF claimed that he was planning to spend, planning to spend, a record-breaking $100 million in the next presidential election with a soft ceiling of a billion dollars. And on top of that, as far back as 2020, he had made the second largest donation specifically to the Biden presidential campaign as well. Let's put this in context. That kind of political contribution going forward, at or even near a billion dollars, would make him the largest donor in history exclusively funding the Democrats, who would have been simultaneously building influence inside the SEC, the CFTC, and dozens of other financial or political companies. However, and this is a very big however, here's what some people might have missed. Sam's father, since his very first encounter with buying politicians, has been enthusiastic about the process, and SBF, the CEO of FTX, the platform, wasn't the only one doing it. Ryan Salam, the co-chief executive officer at FTX International during the 2022 United States midterms, was donating tens of millions of dollars to exclusively Republican candidates and organizations. Nishad Singh, the director of engineering at FTX, was likewise donating millions and millions of dollars again to even more Democratic PACs and candidates, including, get this, a million dollars to mind the gap a political group run by Sam Bankman-Fried's mother. FTX and Alameda Research were filled with executives donating tens of millions of dollars to politicians across both sides of the political spectrum, as well as SBF's own relatives, while Sam himself worked to secure regulatory favor within multiple agencies. If we avoid fixating on one particular party here, which is difficult for Americans, I know that, but if we avoid that practice, FTX was buying politicians on an industrial scale across the entire United States government. Now, to be clear, that isn't exactly uncommon. This is not a new phenomenon in American politics, but the scale here from a company that was less than three years old is mind-blowing. The connections are already deep, but they go much deeper. This is where I will simply state facts. I offer no opinion on this, and while it would be surely possible to insert some sort of insinuation and guide subsequent opinions on the matter, I will make a very pointed effort not to do that. FTX and Ukraine partnered up in March of 2022, aiming to launch a crypto donation platform for the war effort. That website is now offline. Again, this is a common thread for the video. Alameda Research, for example, has also deleted its website as evidence is systematically purged from the internet. But during the same time frame, the United States was supplying tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine for the purpose of military aid, as FTX executives donated tens of millions of dollars to United States politicians. I am not the arbiter of truth on motivation or intent here. I am simply presenting these facts to you as they stand. FTX positioned itself within three years as a powerhouse in crypto and a sleeping giant of political influence. The head of policy and regulatory strategy at FTX 
former CFTC commissioner Mark Wetgen, appointed by the Obama administration. Everything was going their way. Everything was rigged in their favor until it all came crashing down. And the truth is, regulators and law enforcement will be sorting through the wreckage of this for months, possibly years. This is a map of affiliated companies, and this is an estimate of the corporate structure at FTX. FTX was a World Economic Forum partner, but that partnership has since been deleted and scrubbed from the internet. Archives show the truth, of course, but in a scramble to distance themselves, major political figures and institutions are deleting evidence. Remember Mark Wetgen, the head of policy and regulatory strategy we just mentioned? Former CFTC commissioner? Yeah, he is completely deleting his social media accounts, such as Twitter, for example, as I make this video. The chaos involved here is nearly impossible to describe. Scores of leaked documents from alleged insiders, bankruptcy filings, whistleblower testimonial, and a deluge of speculation on where SPF is even hiding. Some say Argentina, his plane just landed, some say Bahamas, this plane, that plane, which plane is it? Some say Russia, some say Cyprus, and some say he's already dead. But perhaps the strangest development of all is this. FTX, on its official Twitter account, came out and stated the following after declaring bankruptcy, after their assets should have all been frozen, and after the chaos had officially begun. Quote, Per our Bahamian headquarters regulation and regulators, we have begun to facilitate withdrawals of Bahamian funds. As such, you may have seen some withdrawals processed by FTX recently as we complied with the regulators." End quote. That's incredibly interesting because it's not real. The Securities and Exchange Commission of the Bahamas came out and clarified in a media statement that no, they did not ask for that. They don't require it, and all of these transfers that FTX claims are required by regulators may be the subject of clawbacks and reversals. FTX is openly lying about governmental regulation in order to open withdrawals in one country for a select few people, the same country where the fresh out of college amphetamine using executives are allegedly housed as of right now. Seems to me like someone got to them, someone you do not want to piss off, or they're just funneling it all back to themselves. Regardless, the depth to which we can descend on this one is practically bottomless. Twitter spaces, a way to basically just podcast to an audience on Twitter, have exploded in the aftermath with upwards of 20 to 30,000 concurrent listeners, including Elon Musk as a speaker, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, though that guy sounds like an idiot, and CZ, the head of Binance, which was a key player in the collapse of FTX and the world's largest current crypto exchange. These Twitter spaces are run by prior crypto rug pull artists and scammers. As an example, Mario Nafal, however you say that shit, while frantically speculating on the reality behind FTX and promoting a great deal of misinformation on Twitter, with an army of blue checkmark crypto losers in tow, is the founder of IBC Launchpad, a company that largely contributed to the ICO bubble a few years ago, the initial coin offering bubble. His website would take snapshots of pump and dump tokens while essentially running a service to teach you how and help you run a pump and dump scam with snapshots of the peak possible price for all of their prior token launches, while those tokens are effectively worthless now. When called out for this, as someone who is now attempting to position himself as a leading authority on this collapse with insider information, he shut down the website and, again, common theme for the video, started deleting all the evidence, saying it was just not updated, it was just, just out of date. But he had been using the peak price screenshot of these scam tokens, some of them only having that value for maybe an hour or two, for months. The influencers who are now wallowing in the attention this crisis has fed them are deranged, pathetic losers. They scream about their insider knowledge while pushing theories and information that have been readily available for days from other sources. One such example would be a YouTuber named BitBoy, who is trying desperately to maintain a centerfold position in the narrative here, regurgitating a theory about one Daniel Friedberg. Friedberg was a high-level compliance and regulatory executive at FTX, formerly the head of legal counsel for them, who also found himself embroiled in scandal a number of years ago, during the mid-2000s, when he helped an online poker website, ultimatebet.com, evade US regulators and law enforcement. He organized false business fronts, false acquisitions, offshore rubber stamp compliance, and all sorts of other criminal actions to keep Ultimate Bet operational. The kicker? He isn't even the only lawyer from Ultimate Bet, a criminal organization, to make the transition into crypto. Stuart Hogner, a former Ultimate Bet lawyer, 
holds a similar regulatory and compliance position at Tether, which is often regarded as the money printer behind crypto to begin with. In fact, a crypto analysis released in 2019 indicated that Tether is the artificial engine behind Bitcoin's dramatic price rise. And now, as FTX goes down in flames, two former colleagues at a criminal poker organization are parallel compliance executives at FTX and Tether. The rabbit hole is very deep. One final note, because if I don't stop myself, I'll just never be done. In the aftermath, crypto exchanges are being pressured to release proof of reserves to rebuild confidence. And yet, as they do this, there are massive trades happening between them. Crypto.com accidentally sent hundreds of millions of dollars to the wrong address and didn't get it back for days. Funds go in from one exchange to the other, a snapshot is taken, and then funds go out, often to another exchange entirely. I cannot say with certainty what is actually happening there. Perhaps that will be yet another video in the future, but something is happening and it should give everyone pause considering the devastation that can be caused by a few post-grad amphetamine users who have a penchant for political donations and an eye for fleecing customers. All in all, the future of finance, crypto, got taken, and that's obviously not true, fuck crypto, it's such a joke of an industry. The future of finance got taken for a ride when a deeply connected drug user catapulted himself to the forefront of a trillion dollar industry, stole billions from customers, he's not even the first one to do it, he tried to buy politicians all over the political spectrum, and then went down in a raging ball of fire faster and harder than almost anything I have ever seen. The fallout is going to be difficult, complicated, and long. The ramifications are, as of yet, not fully known, but the fact remains that FTX will now go down in history alongside Enron, Theranos, the Lehman Brothers, and even Bernie Madoff himself. To be fair, Sam Bankman-Fried has made an impact. Absolutely. And he's left a legacy. It just turns out that the impact he made was not altruistic, contrary to his fabricated and inauthentic goals. It was devastating and corrupt. That's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below. The only shout out right now on this one is the special holiday merchandise. We just launched two separate designs for a limited edition run. The link is down below in the description. They will go two weeks and then ship so that they arrive before the holidays, right? I want to guarantee that they're there before Christmas. Been working on this a while. If you support the channel, please consider purchasing one. Sizes all the way to 4XL, multiple different colors, great quality. And yeah, I've been working towards this for a good amount of time. So hopefully everyone enjoys. Anyway, I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Also check out the sponsor, of course. Thank you all for watching and have a nice night.